so it's a few years from now and your side hustle has grown into a successful business. And people ask you, what's your secret? How did you do it? And you tell them, I learned from the best, author and master storyteller, Ken Follett. My name is Karen, and this is Story Hub, where we talk everything books, movies, and TV shows. So if you want to find stories that you're going to love, then keep watching and please subscribe. In this video, we'll uncover some of the elements of great storytelling, as well as some broader lessons from Ken's life. Ken's journey from part-time side hustle writer to major author is reflective of the creator economy today. He developed his passion for storytelling over 50 years and has created a portfolio of highly successful novels. So who is Ken Follett and why are we talking about him? Ken's published 36 novels which have sold over 170 million copies worldwide. He specializes in historical fiction and thrillers, including The Pillars of the Earth, spy thriller Eye of the Needle, and political drama Never. Ken balanced his career and family all while working to become a writer. He published his first successful novel, The Eye of the Needle, in 1978. His passion for history allowed him to essentially redefine the historical genre. There is just so much to learn here about storytelling and following your passions. But make sure you stick around to the end of the video though when I reveal what I think is Ken's key to success. Number one, historical turning points make great stories. A turning point is a climactic moment in a story when a significant change occurs. Ken Follett uses this often in his historical fiction when he finds specific moments in history that alter it and create stories around that. A great example of this is his novel Eye of the Needle. This novel is set during World War II and Germany is at the precipice of losing the war. A German spy living in England discovers a secret which could turn the tide of the war in Germany's favor. Then, an English woman discovers this plot and threatens to derail the entire mission. This storytelling technique keeps audiences engaged because the stakes are so high. There was a film released over the weekend on Netflix called Munich, The Edge of War, which is completely unrelated to Ken Follett, but illustrates this point really nicely. I'll be posting a video about my top recommendations for this month shortly, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. Number two, success takes time. Success often looks quick and easy, particularly from the outside and with social media today, but it rarely is, and Ken's journey reflects this. He spent years as an unsuccessful writer before finally making it in his breakthrough with Eye of the Needle. He tested different techniques and genres before finally landing on the winning formula, and I think this really nicely shows how success is more often an accumulation of tiny positive changes. Number three, follow your instincts. Ken's career shows how important it is to be bold and follow your instincts. His most successful novel, The Pillars of the Earth, was the book that nobody wanted. In the 1980s, Ken was a successful thriller writer, but he had a real love for history. He envisioned writing a novel set in medieval England with a cathedral that it was based around. His agent, his peers, his friends, everybody advised him against it, saying that it would ruin his career. But Ken had a vision, and now that's what he's most known for. Ken's experience taught him to recognize a good story when he sees one. He was bold, he followed his instincts, and now that one choice ended up defining his career. You know what else is a bold move? Liking this video, subscribing to this channel. Ken's protagonists are often ordinary people who are just trying to improve their situations and make their world a better place. They're often set against characters who are corrupt and want things just to stay the same. These two philosophies set his characters on a collision course with each other. We can see this play out in Pillars of the Earth where a humble stonemason and a monk challenge a corrupt system to build a cathedral which pushes the limits of medieval architecture. This technique creates dramatic ups and downs between these opposing forces. If you like characters who are trying to strive to make their world a better place, then these people need to be somewhat rebellious. In Ken's own words, you can't write a story about someone who is cautious and timid. They never get into trouble. A great example of this is Edith in Ken's World War I historical epic, Fall of Giants. 
Edith defies the conventions of 1900s England to strive for a better life for herself and ultimately improving those lives of the people around her. Ken is essentially crafting characters that you're almost guaranteed to root for. One of the downsides to utilizing these last two storytelling techniques is that it can cause the narrative to become somewhat repetitive and predictable. And that's one of the major criticisms against Ken Follett's work. So if you've read any of Ken Follett's novels, did you find them to be repetitive or predictable in any way? Let me know in the comments. Number six, find your process and embrace it. So what does it actually take to write a 1000 page epic novel? Well, just like any other author, Ken has his own unique process that he goes from when he finds an idea to actually crafting the novel. The basic principle that he uses that which underlines this entire process is simple, diligent planning. He said in interviews time and time again that he likes to stick to a strict schedule. He starts writing early in the morning and goes until about 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday. He essentially treats his writing like a nine to five job. Ken's own diligent planning means that it takes him about three years to write his historical epics. One year for research, one year to write, and one year to rewrite. During that first year when he's conducting research, he does a literature review, he vis visits historical sites, and he generally plots out what's going to happen. He essentially comes up with an outline at the end of that year. In the second year, he does the actual writing itself, and then he asks experts to comment on historical nuances. The last year is dedicated just for rewriting. Ken's philosophy when it comes to historical accuracy is actually an interesting one. He strives to be as historically accurate as possible, but he does so for very practical reasons. I plan to do an entire video on historical accuracy in storytelling, so watch out for that video to be posted very soon. But the bottom line here is to find a process for you that works and to embrace it, whether it's structured or unstructured. Remember that for years, writing was simply a side hustle for Ken. I'm sure that it took a lot of time to find the process that worked for him and got him where he ultimately wanted to be. I'd like to wrap up this video by sharing one final life lesson that we can learn from Ken and what I think is arguably the most impactful for his career, and that is celebrating small successes. Ken was not a successful writer before Eye of the Needle. He did publish novels, but they did not have any sort of commercial success. But regardless, he still celebrated every single one of them by opening a small, very cheap bottle of champagne. So tell me, how do you plan to celebrate your next small win? I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to StoryHub. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.